Okay, I am Jay Prakash. I welcome members of IIP and the participants of this program today for talking about the subject sustaining continual improvements in industrial plants through management system. I also thank the organization, organizing committee of IIP for giving opportunity to share my experiences with all of you on this subject. Okay, so I'll be talking to you on the subject of uh, sustaining improvements. I'll be talking for about an hour. Already we are about 45 minutes delay. I hope uh, you will share with, bear with me for extension of another 45 minutes so that we start at 11.45. We'll go up to one, one o'clock at least. I will talk for about an hour and then we'll have a question and answer session for about 30 minutes. Okay. So it will be too late, sir. We will complete uh, as early as possible. As uh, I will try to cover everything in uh, one hour time. No, you try to make it in around 45 okay. minutes. We will make it question answer short. Very, very good, sir. Very good. Thank you very Thank much. You, I am also the life member of uh, Karnataka chapter IAP as a honorary treasurer. And I've been with um, nearly 15 years, I've been with IIP. And uh, just to talk about a little, I don't want to take too much of time. I have a total of a little over 51 years of experience. I was working for Ms. Uh, Kerala's character company for 24 years, 19, from 1969-70 to 1993. For the last 27 years, I've been working as a freelancer on uh, quality management system, inventory management system, occupation things. Safety. When I was working in Kiroski Electric Company, had the opportunity being a mechanical engineer, going through various departments like uh, industry engineering, tool room, tool design, press shop, die casting, uh, CNC machine shop, and assembly section. Finally, I was in senior manager quality assurance. When I left the organization, resigned, and came out, because during that time when I was working in Electric, I was the management representative. Our company got ISO 9000 in uh, 1992. And I was uh, fortunate to be MR and had a lead writer program at that time. Our company was the second company in Karnataka to get ISO 9000 and 11th in the country. When I left organization in 1993, August, later on as a freelancer, I got qualified for 14,001 environmental management system, 45,001 Occupation and safety management system, 50,001 energy management system. I also represent the world's best uh, certifying body, Bureau Veritas, for assessing company right from December 1993. I don't know how many I've done, even if I take two per month, it go crosses about uh, 350, 400. And uh, some of the small achievements, I don't want to take too much of time, which uh, Prakash has already told, is about uh, many companies I also represent when I was in Kiloska, the opportunity of going through total quality management, four years intensive training from an Indian who was working in Ford company under the leadership of Dr. Deming. So I had that opportunity of going through the total quality management and uh, statistical process control and all these uh, practical experience. Okay. Now with my experience, uh, also I'm a visiting professor for one of the B schools in uh, India, many companies have been certified, 174 companies have been certified with my association for various uh, standards. And I also conduct training program on internal auditing. Okay. In the next one hour, I'll be trying to talk on various management systems, how a continual improvement can be achieved. What I'm trying to say is every company, today most of the companies have been certified for one management system or the other. It can be quality management system, it can be 14K environment or aqua health and safety or energy management system, which has become more popular nowadays. But because of the lack of time today, I'll be touching upon one of the management system, how an industry can get the benefit of the system. Many companies have got ISO with my 30 years, nearly 28, 29 years of experience of consultant, auditor and trainer. I go to various companies which are ISO certified, even including my own companies which have got certified. 
are they using the certificate effectively are they getting the benefit of the system is a question that arises we get the certificate for various reasons it can be the customer requirement it can be forced by the uh, manager, government organization to go for uh, 14000 won but having got the certificate are we getting the real do not get the benefit they are just have got the certificate and in audit time they prepare themselves to go through auditing time but i also have got come across companies which go through very well i can give you two examples of a company in vizac i don't want to name the company they have got certified for iso 9001 when they want to get the work from vizac port and they approach the port the port people said definitely will give order but before that would like to come and see your company assess your certification for 9001 when they visit the company they were uh, rather flabbergasted and said no you are not nothing is there except certificate people are not aware what the management system what the policy or the objective nothing is there so we cannot give any load unless you go through a, again read the whole thing get certified by a recognized certifying body like tv or bvc or any of the uh, recognized certifying body then only we can recognize your system we come and audit there are one of the companies where they went through again and got to certificate and now get the order from uh, uh, pol vizac pol so another example i can give you is about one of the best companies same place let me take vizac there is a company called worldwide diamond company the diamond manufacturing company or uh, dressing the company they are using extremely well they got iso 9000 they got about four plants there and they are doing a fantastic job taking the benefit of that why go to vizac let us talk about uh, rangaravan sons company in mysore who manufacture the agarbatti and the fragrance they are a 1500 crore turnover company is not a small company the top management managing director if something goes wrong he asks my mr and the consent from people where things went wrong where things went wrong which process we are not following please come with the procedure let's go through the procedure there's a procedure needs a change or what is to be done you follow what has been written in the procedure when the top management gives so much of importance to the documentation and the process what they have written they are getting the real benefit that's why they are enjoying the benefit of the system later on they went to other management system called as uh, mr jay prakash ji system yes sir jay prakash ji yes, sir please go ahead yes sir you have to go you. little bit fast with the powerpoint sir i'll do that i'll do that yeah, please uh, thank you okay so when i talk about this management system we have got different management systems i will not go i will not be not touching all that but this i will take the example of 9001 how is going to be effective for organization how the organization can get a benefit of this system 9001 14 45 and 50 who are all the beneficiary and let us understand what are the who are all the beneficiary of the system installing this management system in the organization who gets the benefit for 9001 the benefit goes to customer because he gets a good quality product the organization gets the benefit they can survive in the market and they can continuously progress with iso 9000 and employees get the benefit because the organization is doing well the employees are also happy and now with the 14001 who gets the benefit 14000 talks of environmental management system how we are being damaging the future of our uh, generation how are they going to live from the society gets the benefit the organization gets the benefit and the employees also get the benefit because of the good nature today you can imagine whatever air we are getting whatever water we are getting whatever food we get from the ground from the noise level air level all the we know we need to improve everybody gets with 48000 occupational health and safety with the uh, uh, occupational health and safety management system the employees are happy the uh, organization is happy because of less accidents incidents ill health taking place because of the work related activities in the company then 50000 which is coming off late is the government is going to insist that we are going to give you only 80% energy for your turnover per ton or per crore whatever it is we need to get ready with installing five star energy equipment machines how we can produce the product 
with less input or output that is something like improving the productivity of the organization these are the benefits we are going to get with all these uh, management systems just to go through this slide when all these the management system came into existence can be the 9001 became important in 1987-88 then then 14001 came in 1987 50000 one energy was into little earlier to occupy health and safety in 2011 and uh, two years back the health and safety good out of important i don't want to spend too much of time how the whole world evaluation has taken place the importance of the sellers market to buy earlier market we have moved although i don't talk about all those things okay so today let us talk about the quality management system as an example when you talk about quality management system the two things very important for a successful organization to be effective are the customer and the quality customer is very important is not just a king today he is a god we need to satisfy our customer the first paragraph in iso 9000 talks about in the scope this international standard specify for a qms when organization needs to give a product consistently of good quality and aims to enhance customer satisfaction both quality and customer in the scope it is there so what is quality let us remember two people for quality and customer one two gurus one is uh, mahatma gandhi who talks about what importance is in quality and another guru is uh, dr deming all of us know about dr deming who is a quality guru who transformed japan what it was and what is today japanese are the people who taught the whole world the redefine the world quality that's what we are enjoying today what are these two people talked about our uh, mahatma gandhi talked about the importance of uh, customer i don't want to read out everything he said here at least a few things you say a customer is one not, not the one whom we have to argue with nobody ever one with argument with the customer a customer is the person who brings order on us what he wants is our job to handle them profitably to him and to ourselves so all these important points gone mahatma gandhi has told about the customer so important similarly dr demin talked about the pdca cycle which is you find this pdca cycle in all the management system plan do check cat is the author or the originator of uh, pdca is dr demin so something like total quality management and the iso or management systems are all coming together today so i had the opportunity of learning about tqm which i am combining this dr demin's 14 points most of you may be knowing he says what is the purpose of organization <coughs> sorry the purpose of organization is to uh, improve the product and service to be constantly with the purpose of purpose towards improving product and service the aim to become competitive to stay in the business and provide a job this year told not now more than 60 years back point number 5 in uh, 14 points is says improve constantly and forever system of production and service to improve quality and productivity thus reduce cost when once we improve quality and productivity automatically the cost gets reduced how it helps in all the management systems four management system which i have taken today with a health improves our productivity is goes by attendance will improve with the you uh, consumption less energy the productivity will go up with a good environment we have our health improves the productivity will go up and quality all these are very important we need to ask a question ourselves is our continual improvement is happening are we getting the benefit of the system what we have installed in our uh, organization okay very important if the answer is yes very good we are happy we are good but can we get more than that we are improving no doubt but unfortunately in india we are still in the percentage area not about that the whole world is talking about ppm and ppb we need to move towards that <coughs> the answer is no why where things are going incorrect let us do that one of the things i learned in my tqm is i also also when things go wrong don't ask a question who did it when things go wrong don't ask a question who did it ask a question what went wrong in the process what went wrong in the process nobody makes a mistake deliberately when things go wrong that's what i told you rangaravan sir mysore they say when things go wrong 
they find out what is gone in the process wrong that's what they will talk about see in today's uh, increasing dynamic increasingly dynamic and competitive environment to meet the challenges has become very very difficult to meet this challenge every organization comes with lot of challenges so how do we meet these challenges how do we convert these challenges to opportunity is a very important thing is very simple we can do that because many companies have done it if japanese have done why can't we there's a book called as if japanese can why can't we some like that when other industries are getting the benefit why not we get that in fact i try to say all these management system are something like a prescription of a doctor to be fit and healthy every one individual or organization would like to be slim and fit when i say slim and fit for organization the slim and slimness comes when there is a less fat less rejections less uh, more burden and more profitability the fitness comes when things are going on well it applies to individuals also okay so to go uh, make an effective system uh, for management system understand the system prepare the documentation training to the people and then implement the system effectively and monitor and review how things are happening this is exactly very important thing monitor how things are happening and when once you are achieving improvement set a new objective this is like a pdc cycle when once you achieve the objective <coughs> we do that in <coughs> i'm sorry we do that in our personal life at the age of 20 30 40 60 70 we keep on setting our new objectives and try to achieve that objective i will not spend too much of time on iso all of us know about iso i skip these two slides because of the lack of time so i don't want to spend time on this this any management system talks about process approach risk based thinking and continual improvement so what is important in this uh, setup is the all these management system act like a preventive tool the concept of preventive action has been expressed by use of uh, this based thinking or process approach the preventive action has not been totally removed it has been given a good importance in the beginning itself this based thinking when you say this based thinking all of us come across various risks which we will cover a little later okay. and when i talk about this uh, all managed systems have got 10 classes three classes are called as uh, introductory classes and seven classes are called basic classes basic elements and basic requirements and uh, the three introductory classes are nothing but it talks about scope references and term meaning of various terminologies we don't worry about that the most important thing is from 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 context organization leadership planning support operation performance and performance evaluation and improvement all these 10 elements are common for all management system whether is the uh, information system and system or any other management system these 10 has been uh, standardized by international organization uh, for standardization iso if you want to go uh, one by one there is a record organization every organization has got a purpose to make it effective what you need to do so it is every organization has got a purpose the organization comes across various issues go more with the issue examples with the plant maintenance as the organization the every organization comes across issues both internally and externally internally we have got our own people our own equipments our own material our own things whatever issue we come across we come come across issues of value issues of value do we give values we give importance you know do we give value i would say pp
Mr. Jay Prakash, you have unmuted yourself, sir. You have to unmute. You have muted yourself. Plus, actually, once you have had habit of going by walking, management, walking. Beg your pardon. Uh, are you hearing me? Unmuted. Please unmute it. You what happened? Unmute. Share my. Yeah, you are unmuted. Okay, okay, fine. Screen. Is okay now? Yeah, please go ahead, sir. Now my screen. I'm not seeing my presentation material. Uh, screen sharing is not happening. I think you have to start. Again. Is that? Is that? It will happen. It will happen. It's happening now. So okay. I was just giving an example of uh, when I came across uh, in Kiloska Electric when my guru, Mr. Krishna Rao, took me to the show. We had the habit of management by walking. 7:30 was our factory time. Uh, we used to go at 7 o'clock, going around the factory. Once in uh, machine shop, in the assembly shop, he asked me a question. Jay Prakash, give me 50 paisa coin. I want about 25. How can I have? I had about 10 coins of various uh, denominations. I said, I have only this much. What do you want, sir? He said, I want to throw it on the shop floor. Why do you want to throw it, sir? I want to see how many of uh, what are you going to do? People are going to collect that, put it in their packet. I told him. Then look at that. Washer, nut, bowls are all laying on the floor. Whatever importance we are giving for that. Are we not paid money for all those things? Do you value for that uh, material? He said that. I learned what is the value for our product, people, and time. Do we give time for our uh, uh, value for time? What about the culture in our company with our own people? What is the culture? When I talk about the culture, do we have behavioral habit? Some culture, one ex simple example to give, once a boss in a department, or uh, in the cabin, a student comes there, again a call comes from his other boss, where he can find out, his boss is calling, he tells the assistant, please tell that man, I am not in the seat. This is the culture we have. Coming on to the knowledge part of it, how do we give knowledge to our people? Do our people in maintenance department, are they aware of MTTR, MTBF, condition monitoring, value analysis, uh, vibration analysis, do they about, company knows about CPK value, process capability index. These are very, very important thing, the knowledge wise. We need to see that our people inside the company have what knowledge and performance of our department. These are the internal issues we have, whether to what extent they're all good and what are the things to be done. Okay, then moving on to the next slide. External context, we have various things. I want to talk about is our organization is to what are the issues you come across technology wise, legal wise, market, cultural outside, social. Today we have got economic environment. So all these are giving rise to issues. And from these issues, we need to find out what is the risk and opportunity we come across. We are, similarly, we have various interested parties yes, are surrounding us. They expect certain things from us. If you don't provide that, that becomes a risk for the organization. Both these things, the uh, issues and the needs expectation leads to what is called as the risk. Every activity in our life has got a risk. The risk can be unacceptable risk. Risk can be critical, major, minor, and acceptable risk. To be organization to be effective, to be a department to be effective, all our minor, major, critical, unacceptable risk, we need to bring it to a level of acceptable risk. If all the pros are working under acceptable risk, then we are comfortably working in the organization. So the standards talk, all management talks about risk and opportunities. When I say all the risk leads us to opportunities. The best example today I can give what the whole world is talking about COVID-19. We have a lot of issues. Issues in COVID-19 COVID can be Sickness, no jobs, companies are not working, the country is facing problem, our health is uh, deteriorating, we have got issues of going out, they are the issues. What the risk? Risk is losing our life, losing our business, customer is moving away, they are all the risk. But look at the opportunity, what we have in the future. What our Prime Minister talks about opportunity for the country, India. Most of the countries, companies from different countries are moving to India, for our benefit, the opportunity are plenty. Like this, risk and opportunity, they go together. Okay, the risk and opportunity, they go together. We need to convert all these risk issues 
and to the opportunities for that the leadership is very important in the organization how the leaders work how the leaders have the culture what the behave the standard talks about the leadership qualities we don't want only leadership or the managers we need people to have the leadership quality when i say leadership quality we have in our company the managers and leaders it can be a union leader it can be organization leader it can be community leader it can be any leader as you got a, our managers they have the leadership quality i won't say all managers are not leaders but all leaders are managers i make explanation i consider the a leader is one who has got that charismatic charismatic magnetic approach of getting the work done in a good environment i repeat that again is a good statement i would say i learned somewhere that a leader is one who has got that charismatic magnetic approach of getting the work done in a good atmosphere a manager get the work can get the work done by authority a manager leader gets the work done with the association so how the standard says the leadership is very important a leader has to define what the future of the company what the policy in what direction we need to go what the organization should look like what are those responsibility and resp- authority of all the people you define everybody let's not have a free passenger ticketless passenger in our company everybody has got a work to do everyone does that work every year were knowledgeable they are competent and they do their job and involve all the people in achieving the improvement and continue improve this is one of the leadership quality the standard talks about okay so i just what the leader is establish a policy involve establish objectives also one of the objectives uh, responsibility of the leadership leaders and provide adequate resources monitor and review the progress as we go along conduct reviews different type of reviews it can be production review or management review or energy review or health and safety review whatever it is motivate people is what what we require motivate people and then adopt continuous improvement approach process approach for getting that this is what the standard talks about in these two elements context organization leadership now the most important thing is the planning activity the standard to be effective he said do the planning planning is what you identify where things may go wrong and what you want to achieve and try to write a procedure how to achieve that is something like quality plan and quality planning the customer asked today for your product what is the quality plan quality plan is a document specifying what are the processes procedure so resources required to be applied by whom and when there is a plan with the quality planning how to achieve the quality planning by quality assurance and quality control activities this is what the customer wants now the standard has explained a beautiful way of bringing that issue and risk what i told earlier in this to address what is the action to address risk and opportunity we have got issues on one side requirement on the interest on the other side bring both these thing to planning activity risk and opportunity bring it to a planning activity plan your activity considering the issues risk expectation risk and opportunity write down how, convert that all the risk to a different levels of called a rpn value risk priority number and start working on which are the risks which are not acceptable which are major critical bring them to assemble put an effort then that is what it talks about planning in addition to the planning he also talks about what is called as quality objectives what do you want to achieve in the future there are four types of organizations one is they don't know where they are they also don't know where they want to go some organization they don't know where they are but they want to go to the moon some organization they know where they are they don't know where they want to go they are enjoying the today's fruit they don't know about the future there are organizations who know where they are they also know where they want to go that i call it as progressive company a professional company they know where they are today and they know where they want to go they are the people who use all this management system effectively for improvement activity this management system can apply for organization as well as for 
a particular department like maintenance department. Okay. I mean, let's talk about issue in the maintenance department. Let me just give an example. Plant engineering. Do you know, uh, issue is not finding the tool at the right time. Not finding the uh, maybe space not available. Right uh, space may not be available at the right time. Maybe the people don't allow the machine for carrying out preventive maintenance. A lot of issues will be there. Attendance may be a problem. All these issues, the, the risk will be the, the required quality product or the quantity of product will not come through. Coming on to the six, uh, the standard talks, all the risk, right on the action plan and achieve quality, right on the planning to achieve them. There's, there are two very important things like uh, in a court of improvement, two horses are there. One talks about action to achieve risk and opportunity and the other horse talks about quality objective and planning to achieve them. If these two horses are taken care, there's no end for improvement for organization. When I say quality objective, when you set the objective, the standard says uh, 4H, uh, what is it? 4W1H, where, what, when, and who, and how do you achieve that? This is not only setting the objective what you want to achieve, the standard talks about how do you achieve that? Who is responsible? How to evaluate that? What is to achieve? When you will achieve? When you will come? All the questions we'll ask. So the risk and opportunity talks about all these talks about quality objective in the six. Now we want to support. We are not come to operation yet. How the support here the maintenance comes is very important. I not cover all the uh, sections here. Seven point one to seven point five. I'll talk about the people. The right people are there. The organization has to believe in one thing. The people whom we have are the right people doing the right job. As I told earlier, if things go wrong, don't say the people are responsible, is the process is responsible. Because the simple reason, the product is the result of the process. Service is the result of the process. We need to take care of people. We believe in people in plant maintenance. We believe people in the organization. All are good. Nobody is bad in the organization. Okay. Coming to the infrastructure, what we have. Okay, plant maintenance is responsible for infrastructure. So how do you maintain our infrastructure? Not only equip, putting, installing the machines in the place, how do you maintain that? Here I remember, I, I, don't, I am tempted to give these two examples. In, in every organization, the HR department and maintenance department are not given the due respect. I hope all of you, all of you agree with me. When they remember, when the uh, maintenance man is remembered, when the equipment break down. When the HR department is remembered, when a disciplinary action is to be taken. But the organization forgets the HR department takes care of human being, God-given gift human being. Maintenance department takes care of man-made machines. These two are very important. When people are there to take care of man-made machines and the people are there to take care of uh, God-given gift human people, and the equipment, why are we not taking care of these two? And the organization has to give a lot of importance for the HR department who improve the, mold the people for the future and the maintenance department who ensures that the equipment is uh, continuously working without a breakdown. Here again, I want to give an example of, look at the vehicles we were using 30 years back and the vehicles we are using today. In uh, old vehicles, we don't know when it was breaking down. Today, the manufacturer says, don't open the bannet, they don't give you any tool set at all, except the jack and wheel spanner. That means to say, the breakdown has no breakdown at all today. How the maintenance people, our plant engineer people, maintain our infrastructure in our company without a breakdown, zero breakdown. Move towards zero breakdown. That is the importance the management system talks about how our plant engineering move towards that. Okay. The environment part of it, I will not touch more on that. 14,000 talks about and environment operational process. We not implement the required environment everywhere. But what is for the product and service we provide? What environment do you need to provide for effective operation? And here, the instruments is a very important tool, activity in the maintenance department as well as the organization. Let's just imagine what happens if the instruments are not good, are not giving the true value? At that time, the, for example, let me take an example of a machine tool where it needs a, 
uh, compressed way, the machine has to work at a particular uh, pneumatic pressure. That is a 3 to 3.5 bar. If the pressure is okay, if the pressure gauge is showing correctly the uh, pressure, then the equipment is working properly. If the pressure gauge is not all right, if the machine is working with a wrong pressure, compressed air pressure, then is a malfunctioning will start, the quality will suffer, the rejections will be very high. Similarly, any instrument, the production man using an instrument, what happens if the product quality is not good because of the wrong instrument we are using? The wrong product may go to the customer or the good product may get rejected within the organization. Both are very dangerous. So instrument plays a very important role and knowledge of people in our company or a department, the 7.1.6 talks about what is the knowledge necessary for our people in the organization we need to bring because the world is moving very fast. We need to see that our people are acquainted with the latest technology and latest knowledge. That's very important. And standard talks about all our people are competent. Today is a fact that if a human being or an individual is not competent, he cannot survive today. The same thing applies to organization. If the organization is not competent, if the plant engineering is not competent to maintain the equipment properly, we need to find a new setup, a new company. So competence, not only for the individual, for organization it applies. The standard does very well. They identify, they determine the necessary competence of people and see that competence is acquired. And awareness is another thing. It's a general thing. I don't want to comment much time, take too much of time on awareness and uh, communication and all that. Document information, I want to spend a few minutes on that. The standard ISO philosophy is basically, write what you want to do, do the way the way you are written down. And I am added one more thing there, continually improve what you are written down. The philosophy of ISO is something like, Write down the way what you want to do. Do all the time the way you are written down and continue to improve what you are written down. That tells organization for continual improvement. In our maintenance department also, how to change the bearing? If the people does know, does, the people know how to remove the bearing and to put a new bearing. Have you written a procedure for that? Let people follow that. When you also say that we have got a documentation, maybe electronic media or a hard copy, people write, do the thing the way they established documentation, the way we have got a beautiful system on our uh, uh, railway traffic, railway management, or the airlines management. And also we have the road management, we don't follow that. Okay, in one of the companies, people told me when I went for auditing, so this documentation is very much helpful to me because a new man comes to my department, I just give the department manual to him, there we understand, reads it for two days, he will start working the way the organization wants him to work. So the importance of documentation is so good that write on the documentation electronically or soft hard copy, make it available to the people, let them refer to that, refresh that, and that's how the documentation helps a lot. Okay. So let me move on to the next one called operations. There are operations is the activity which takes place in the organization where we need to uh, Understand what the customer wants very clearly. 8.1 is only really a quality plan. I don't touch upon that. Requirement of product and service, the marketing department, understand what exactly. Many times we uh, do the product, not what customer wants. We manufacture it later and we find out it's not what customer wanted. I'll give you a simple example. It so happened in our own Kiloska Electric once. We got an order. For 25 machines of 32 kilowatt, 25 machines of 32 kilowatt machines were required. We produced as usual. The delay was there in delivery. A lot of pressure from the customer. Why the 25 motors are not being delivered? Because his plant, the plant of textile mills was ready with him. All the equipments were all installed. He was waiting only for the motor. With the delay, we supplied the machine. 25 motors numbers went to the customer. Then we got a beautiful love letter. What that love letter? He said, sir, we have received the 25 motors. What I wanted is 25 motors, 32 kilowatt with a terminal box on the right hand side. What we delivered to him, 25 motors with the terminal box on the left hand side. What happened? The customer satisfaction is 
send back all the mortgages back to us. I got another one and a half months delay for it to get the right hand terminal box, 25 kilo, 25 motors, 32 kilowatt. This is what the marketing plays a very important role. Effective to understand what customer wants is a customer is satisfied with what you have done. You need to measure that. That's very important thing. And uh, marketing department. Design, okay, let's not touch upon design activity. The external providers activity, let us step forward, touch upon the materials what we get and uh, what are the activities we get from outside outsourcing activity. Whether you do outsourcing or internally you do, customer is not worried, at least for the regular products, where he says the quality has to be the same. The company has to ensure that the whatever the material I get from outside of the right quality, with the, whatever the material I, uh, operation I get from outside is the right quality. That's very, very important. The production, I will not touch much upon that. The production is to be, uh, must be so good, the production uh, quantity wise or the quality wise, we have to ensure that the materials are stored properly, the identification is okay, preservation is okay. When I talk about preservation, I also talk upon, talk to maintenance department also. How are we preserving the product? Materials, spares, or the consumables, or the any material what you got in maintenance department, are they being protected, preserved properly so it will not, the quality will not get deteriorated. So all these things talks in production, which also has got 8.5 also talks about various uh, sub parameters are they from 8.5.1 to identification traceability, customer provided product, all these things comes out there. Then inspection testing, it talks about 8.6. The how do you list the product both in the uh, in process as well as final product? Uh, here I would say any ISO 9000 certified company need not inspect the material that comes inside your company. A good company is one where there is no incoming inspection because of the fact that when your product is going to the customer, we tell him no need for inspection, you directly use that. When you ensure the customer that the products are good, you can straight away use. The same concept should go to your providers or the suppliers. When you once get the inward, inward material, you can straight away use. That's what they do in automobile industries. Okay, good. Now coming to the non-confirmed product, I don't touch many too many things on that. The non-confirmed, they will do that. The lesser the non-confirmed product is good. Coming on to the plant maintenance activity, how are the non-conformity takes place in our maintenance activity? I repair the machine, I rectify the machine, but again, it is breaking down. So, uh, mean time between failure, the department's ISO talks about how you identify the mean time between failure, how do you uh, change the mean time between failures, expand. If your equipment is failing once in six months, can you make it once in a year or make it once in two years or parallelly maintain to repair? How much of time I have taken to repair the time, separate the machine? Can I reduce that? If I was taking one and a half hours, can you reduce to 45 minutes to less than that? I see that the machine does not break down. All these things, uh, non-conformity in plant engineering, can we think of reducing that? We talk about that. This is a very important thing. We need to evaluate performance evaluation of the organization and the maintenance department. Uh, when you talk about evaluation of our department, how often the equipment is breaking down, how much of space is consumed, or the, all this evaluation can be done in addition to organizational requirement of customer satisfaction and uh, performance of various departments. And system, uh, system auditing can be done like internal auditing. The standard talks about you audit your own organization, your own department, where we are. The most, there are different type of audits. I will not go elaborate on that. So it's like first party, second party, and third party. First party audit is nothing but internet, you audit your own system by yourself. Second party is your customer or external man coming and auditing you. The third party audit is the independent body coming and auditing for certification process. We are not worried about second, third party as the effective management system. We are worried about first party audit called internal audit. Our plant maintenance will audit our own department, not by our own people, by other people. The, one of the requirements of internal audit is we should be audited objectively by uh, another person of the say, a different department. So internal audit is something like a, uh, I'm a doctor for myself. I know where things are there. 
where things are not going all right, I correct myself. And 9.3 talks about the management review. The top management has to review how things are happening in our company. How, where are we? What are the objective we have set? What are the risk value? How we reduce the risk value? This all the to make it effective management system. These are the things we need to cover. The improvement part, last element, important part of it. It talks about uh, non-conformity and corrective action. A lot of non-conformity takes place. Mr. Ashok was uh, helping me yesterday. Why don't you emphasize on non-conformity of client engineers found when he went around the shop. When he goes to the shop, he finds in a particular equipment, the oil level was less. There's non-conformity. It can be found out either by the operator or by the maintenance crew. When once we identify the non-conformity of oil level is less, then he moves on to the uh, stores person to say, why oil are not provided for the machine? The maintenance man says, the oil has not been procured. Then we go to the purchase man. Why you are not procured? I place the order. It we understand all these things, uh, cycle effect, how non-conformity takes place. Where non-conformity can be a product non-conformity or a process non-conformity or a system non-conformity. The idea is we need to identify the non-conformity, go to the root cause and take action. It is called as corrective action. Many companies don't realize this. A mistake happened, we correct the situation. Again, that mistake reoccur again. So to see that the, the same mistake does not reoccur again is our responsibility to go to the root cause and find out where things have gone wrong. I always love to give this example of in every training session I give. What is non-conformity? I talk for eight hours in a, a lecture, a three-day program. When I talk on the first day, for eight hours, I may get a headache. I may get a headache. When I get a headache, when I go to the doctor, doctor says, take a tablet. I take the tablet, next day morning, I'm okay. I talk for another eight hours, I get a headache again. I go to the doctor, what is wrong with you? I don't want to get the same tablet, it's a correction, let me go through what's happening, what are you doing? I give a lecture for eight hours, nine hours. Then what about, what are the things happening? He goes up and he says, come to inter inside, I will examine thoroughly and gives me a course of tablets, not one tablet. A course of tablets, he says, take it for one week and come back and see me. He has gone to the root cause of my headache and given a course of tablet. Then after 10 days, I go back to the smiling face. So I'm talking for 10 hours, I don't get the headache. Similarly, when once an uncomplement happens in our plant maintenance or in manufacturing area, have you gone to the root cause? I take action on the root cause. The definition of active action, action taken to uh, correct the system or the root cause in order to see that it doesn't reoccur. Uh, Definition of preventive action is action to eliminate the potential non-conformity in order to see a, a potential non-conformity does not occur at all. That is preventive action. So preventive action is more important than the corrective action. Preventive action in the class 4.1, 4.2, issue, risk, and action taken 6.1, 6.2 talks about preventive action. So all these management system helps us to take, prepare for our future, identify what is not going all right, what is not all right and taking action on that to see that all the time we are working with uh, less risk achieving what we want to achieve called as continued improvement is taking place either with QMS or with uh, uh, OSHAs or uh, energy management or the, I don't want to spend much time because there's no time. The stand also talks about six management principles. It talks about customer focus as I told earlier Customer is no more a king, he's a god today. We need to focus. Everyone, is the plant maintenance is focusing on the customer. The customer may be a production shop. The customer may be management. He needs to think of outside customer. Customer is important to us because production and company has committed to provide the product to the customer at the right time and the right quality. How the plant maintenance is supporting production people or equipment to give the customer focus. Customer wants this uh, Quality, can this machine produce that quality? You need to think of that. There's the customer focus. The people have got the leadership quality. The important thing is, as the principal has got a leadership, as a five class number also has got a leadership. Do you have the leader? You would like to have more and more leaders in our company, in addition to managers who have the leadership qualities. 
and to get the work done you engage people is a team that gives the result not an individual if you win the world cup is the team that is uh, performing not an individual eating a century at taking six wickets so from that point organization engage people to achieve the i'll take another 10 minutes please prakash i'll take another 10 minutes prakash prakash i'll take another 10 minutes hello okay okay walking chestanu oka naalu ai saarla akkada paina i'll take another 10 minutes prakash paina ala tirugutunnattu untunna they seem some some disturbance can i go ahead please uh, please please prakash go ahead yeah, i'll take another 10 12 minutes so yeah, the third yeah. time i'll not take engage people the process approach is very important the process as i told the result the result uh, product is the output of the result process give the response importance the process improvement is another thing it says continuous improvement has to be there for any decision making go with the facts not on the opinion somebody is saying this equipment is very bad replace the equipment or uh, recondition the machine is the decision on what the fact that how many breakdowns are happening how much of money we are spending on that equipment for repair activity let us talk with the facts not on the opinion and lastly most important thing the principle is relationship management for every organization for every department for every individual this is what the man matters relationship management the how is that the company is doing well or individuals are doing well because the relationship we have with the customer relationship we have with the supplier relationship with our colleagues relationship with everyone organization if a business goes through with 80% goes with the relationship and 20% maybe to your product quality today everyone knows how to build a good quality product how you are maintain the relationship with your customer and suppliers and your employees is important so relationship management plays away. these are seven principles it can be applied to every department and organization now the some of the potential benefits of all these uh, management system uh, the organization gets ability to provide consistently the required quality able to comply with applicable state regulatory requirement reducing the risk and opportunities demonstrating that we meet the conformity requirement achieving continuous improvement there are some of the benefits what we get from the standard the pd cycle which has come in the standard i just go through this i'll give you establish a policy and objective go through the quiz planning how to achieve that carry out the process as a defined procedure non conformity take action on that review the uh, how is happening set a new object as i told you in the earlier slide pd seconds can can be used for all these improvement activities okay this is important the pd say is not spent too much of time on that the methodology is uh, derived from pdca can be for all type of uh, setup for effective implementation management system to get the best benefit effective implement a management system give importance to internal audit provide adequate resources then periodically review the progress conduct effective management review meeting set new goals and achieve this is a cycle it applies for uh, every operations one of the management stage uh, one of the magazine was going through the managing director of one of the companies he talks about the for a successful organization in the chairman of uh, shakti group he says any system that is brought in uh, should be first educated the people introduced effectively then it should be enforced and monitored only if the sequence is followed to stay in the business then get the benefit of this, this is one of the statement one of the top management people had done that implementing is not important review has to be done involve every everyone apply all the seven principles and then we can get the benefit of this okay so 9001 can give a benefit product quality will improve 9001 14001 environmentally improve all our future generation we can uh, uh, live comfortably with a better future because how much we are damaging the environment we have to think of how our uh, 
process in our company are damaging the environment. How much we can reduce the damage to the environment is our obligation to society, how we can do that for effective implementation of management system. Coming to 45,001, how we are we making sure that our people working in our company, not only the people working in our company, those who come within our company, those who are working on behalf of the company outside, how their safety is taken care. With the work-related activities, people should not get accidents, people should not end up with work-related illness. That is to say that we need to organizations to monitor and be happy to say that for the last 365 days, no incidents have taken place, no accidents have taken place. Like that, if the, some of the organizations have seen, they put a big board in front of the company, how, when the last accident took place in the company, how safe. And they also put ensure that how the pollution levels they are maintaining in their organization. It can be a chimney output, it can be ETP level, the, what uh, discharge they do from the ETP, all these helps us a lot. And lastly, this uh, uh, 50,001, how we are consuming less energy. It need not be electrical energy. It can be steam, it can be compressed air, it can be any type of energy, wind energy or anything. How much of consumption I'm being in every department, how do I think of reducing our continued improvement? When one of these continued improvement doesn't take place, how do we sustain this improvement in organization using any of these management system? And today we are come to a state that if we don't adopt this management system, effectively in organization, survival becomes difficult. I hope all of you agree with me. And to do this job, this is a small story I come across, a story of uh, everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. It was an important job to be done. Everybody was asked to do that. Everybody was sure somebody would do it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody would not do it. At the end, it's why everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done that job. It's not happened that, that way in our organization. Everybody has to understand the responsibility and do the job. Okay. Then, uh, for achieving this, I'll come back to Dr. Deming. 14, point number 14, the last point of Dr. Deming, he talks about transformation. Transformation, for this transformation to take place, put everybody in the company to work, accomplish transformation. And the transformation is everybody's job. In our industrial department, we make changes, not transformation. There's a lot of difference between a change and a transformation. A change is, I change the tool, I change my shirt, I change sort of the outlook. It's the outwardly changes that takes place with a man. But transformation is inwardly. Transformation takes a long time. I have to transform a human being. I transform the output of a department. I transform output of a company. The transformation is one, what Japanese did from 1950 to 1970 with the help of Dr. Deming and Dr. Zurong. We have plenty of quality gurus in our world, but the most important thing is Dr. Deming and Dr. Zurong Dr. Deming came out with a PDCA concept, as well as Zuron came out with a trilogy, uh, quality control, quality improvement, and quality uh, planning. This, both these gurus made the change to the Japanese. Japanese are the one who used this concept and improved from 1950s what they were and made the transformation whole the world. They taught the whole world what is quality and what they are. And everyone is trying to follow if Japanese can come, did when Japanese can do that, why not we? With this, I would like to conclude my talk. Go with uh, take the quality uh, question and answers, and I've uh, taken uh, 48 minutes for my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for giving the opportunity to talk to me, uh, to all my listeners and participants, and uh, let us uh, start debating on question and answers. Please, I'll open it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prakash. Thank you so much, Jay Prakash ji. Yeah. Any questions from the participants? I want to ask yes, one question. Yeah, Mr. Please uh, yes, introduce sir. yourself, sir. Kandan Soundarajan. One by one, I can give the chance. Uh, my name is Kandan Soundarajan. I am from Mumbai chapter of IIP. I am a life fellow of the Institution of Engineers. Yes, sir. I have one question to ask only. 
Yes, I have been a very ardent listener of your excellent presentation, number one. Number two, the PDCA cycle is something that is very close to my heart. Number yes, three, the problem is... Uh, sorry, uh, somebody asked me to start my video, but that's not important. 